The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to the webinar. My name is Jennifer Adelstein and I'm the Marketing Assistant for Industrial Controls. Today's webinar is Fundamentals of Combustion, Learn Why Improper Combustion Can Be Dangerous and Very Expensive, presented by Ron Makowitz and John Graham of Industrial Controls. The presentation will take about 45 minutes to an hour, including questions. After the presentation, we will take some time to answer your questions. During the presentation, feel free to enter your questions into the chat interface on the right-hand side of your screen, and they will be addressed at the end. We will also open it up to voice questions where you can raise your hand and you will be unmuted so you can communicate directly with the speakers. Now we are going to hear from our presenters. John Graham is a senior engineer at Industrial Controls and has close to 30 years of experience in the industry. In that time, he has worked with mechanical contractors and industrial and commercial customers selecting discrete components and designing HVAC and industrial solutions. Pneumatics and combustion are two of his many areas of expertise. John did his undergraduate work at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Ron Makowitz is a Regional Vice President at Industrial Controls and has been with them for 11 years. He has 36 years of experience in the HVAC industry. In that time, he has worked at Johnson Controls for 23 years and finished as a Director of North American Distribution. Ron earned his graduate degree in electrical engineering at Purdue University. At this time, I'll pass it over to Ron to get us started. He and John will be alternating comments on each of the slides as we move through the presentation. Thanks, Jen. Uh, hi, everybody. This is uh, Ron, uh, sometimes known as Mac. And uh, good morning. John Graham is right here next mm -hmm. to me. So uh, make no mistake about it, uh, John Graham is the guy with the combustion expertise in, in this duo. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with John for all of my 11 years here at uh, Industrial Controls. And you folks are in for a treat. John really knows his stuff. Uh, let me just dwell for a second on the title that we have up there. Uh, you know, it says Fundamentals of Combustion, and then there's kind of a tag title underneath it. What we're going to do today is really get back to the fundamentals, uh, establish a foundation, and hopefully give everybody who's starting out or learning some really good basic instruction. And for those of you who have been at this for a while, uh, an opportunity maybe to kind of revisit some of the things you've learned. Uh, perhaps think about them in a different way now that you have the benefit of your experience in the industry. Um, and if you're someone who is perhaps a, a building owner or a process owner and you're hiring people to do this kind of work, help you understand what you should know and what you should be asking. Uh, and if you're the person who's hired to do the work, uh, perhaps help you understand maybe some ways to explain it to these to these users in, in a way that would make sense to people who don't deal with this every day. Um, we're going to move on to talk about uh, energy efficiency and safety as we get maybe into the back third of the presentation. Uh, but we're going to do it in such a way that it levers or springs off the fundamentals that we talk about. So if we do our job properly, when we start talking about safety and energy, it will make sense relative to what you've heard in the first two-thirds of the presentation. It's kind of like the old example with uh, knowing the math and doing the calculator. You know, we're going to spend the first two-thirds learning the math. Uh, and then we'll talk maybe about some of the, the solutions or why things work the way they do. Um, and so that's our intent. We're going to try to keep it light. Uh, John and I are definitely going to have fun. So we uh, encourage you to have oh, fun yeah. with us. Um, fun we'll do it conversationally. Um, and for those of you who are into sports, this, uh, John's going to do the play-by-play -play and I'm going to do the color. So my job is to kind of interject with some questions that hopefully are on your mind as you're listening to the presentation. Uh, as you hear things that uh, spark curiosities in your mind, write them down. Ask us at the end. Uh, if you don't quite understand something, write that down too because then we can maybe cover that in the Q&A if, if we need to. So uh, enough for me. John, any comments on your part? Well, it's a big topic. We're going to try to move it along. Uh, if it were me, I'd have a four-hour session. But it's not the way it's going to happen today, so we'll keep it going. OK, so let's get started. We're going to chat for just a few minutes up front about industrial controls, in case you're not familiar with us. Um, we have virtually every logo and every manufacturer uh, that's on the who's who's list in industrial and, and commercial controls. Uh, that means that these people have faith and confidence in us to take their product to the marketplace. 
it means that we have faith and confidence in them as good suppliers. And as industrial controls continues to grow, which it has done quite a bit over the past several years, we acquire more lines, and more importantly, we acquire more expertise. And that translates into information and help that's available to you, whether it's walking over to your local branch or whether it's picking up the phone and talking to us. I don't care if you're in Idaho, Montana, or New York City, we'll be there to take care of you. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One of the benefits of having so many different products is that we can help you in your business in many different ways, whether it's a requirement for a replacement control valve or something on the HVAC front, something related to your process, manufacturing of, of any goods. We've generally got stock on hand. We've got over $10 million in inventory uh, scattered strategically throughout our organization, and we've got a wonderful record of on-time and accurate delivery. So we bring those to the table as well. You're going to see there some pictures of some products, and again, depending on your building or your application, I suspect, if not everything on that chart, some of those look familiar to you. And that's simply intended to kind of help uh, put a face to the name, if you will, the name being the manufacturers, and these are the kinds of things that you look at every day. Uh, but as important to that, obviously, is, is our commitment uh, to you as customers or as potential customers, perhaps, today. You know, we talked about logistically the things that we do well in terms of getting product to you on time uh, and with a certain amount of value. Uh, I think the most important commitment that we have to our customers is to be there for them technically and to be there as a sounding board as they start to look at solutions or simply discrete component replacements. Uh, we recognize that people on balance do business with those that they trust and with those with whom they have a relationship. So it's our job as, as a supplier to build that trust and to build those relationships. We do them through the kinds of things that we're doing today. Uh, we do them through helping you as you have technical issues and, and in lots of other ways. Exactly. John? We've invested recently in a new catalog. And by now, I would hope everyone attending today has, has got, a, got a copy, a hard copy. It's about 1,300 pages long. And as you can see on the left-hand side of the slide, we've broken it down into major categories, combustion being the first one. I was involved pretty heavily in putting that together. It's our first go at this. Uh, it took an awful lot. We're very proud of it. But we like to really refer to it more as a source book than a catalog because, of course, it shows more than just hardware. So uh, a telephone call can bring you technical support. Uh, interacting with us can. But when you just need to look at a product, it's there for you to review. Building upon that, we also have a new enhanced website, which is laid out quite a bit like the catalog. So you can uh, drill down based on the bar that you click on on the left, very much like you would on the catalog. But it now also brings more than just a digital version. It also brings a lot of links for white papers, tech notes, and those kinds of things that are really kind of dynamic. We're evolving with those as we see the market change, as we get questions and inquiries, we're trying to kind of keep that as a living thing. So please come by. Please plot your own. Take your time. Visit us often and, and look for new things. OK. So let's uh, get into the, the meat of the presentation. Mm -hmm. then. And so this agenda reflects what we spoke about when we first kicked off today, uh, the basic principles of combustion. That will take about 2 thirds of our session. Um, and then we'll roll a little bit into combustion analysis. And then we'll talk about energy and about safety. And again, the last two bullets should flow pretty freely off of what we discuss in, in the first bullet. So um, we'll go back to the beginning. Uh, we'll, as we said before, try to establish that foundation. Uh, but let me also be careful to explain what we're not going to do today. Uh, by virtue uh, of the nature of the topic, we're not going to get into specific applications, nor specific hardware, uh, or perhaps a specific industry. We're going to try to try to keep it generic so that everybody can get something out of this. We've obviously got a wide audience out there listening, and everybody's got varying backgrounds. Everybody does different things or lives in different kinds of facilities, I should say. Um, as I said, so we won't get into those specifics. Uh, it won't be a how-to. Literally will be a learning uh, and an education. And uh, again, my role will be to kind of act as your advocate as we go through this. Um, most of our examples are going to draw on natural gas simply because we had to pick something and that seemed like a good thing to pick. 
Uh, we will perhaps talk more about boilers than anything else, only yeah, because for something. They, mm -hmm. they lend themselves to the examples sure. a little bit better. So, John, take it away. Sure. When we think about entering this topic, I want to break it down into two major subsections first. Just about any combustion application will consist of the combustion process itself, the combustion control, and then there's some kind of burner management facet to it as well. The burner management system is there for essentially one purpose. It's there to supervise the purge, the ignition, the, the uh, automatic operation of a burner. It is there as a safety net, and it is there to trip the burner upon detection of any safety-related failure. On the left-hand side of the slide, where we're going to live... Oh, let me stop you for a second. So uh -huh. it says AKA FSG. FSG is... FSG stands for Flame Safeguard. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Flame Supervision, anything in that family of acronyms, uh -huh. acronym soup, will describe the uh, brains that we have inside that system. It can be the red box on the, on the left-hand side that's a FireEye uh, full-function programmer, or on the right-hand side, you've probably seen those, the Honeywell version of it. So that would be this, this guy here, there, and, and the other one there, 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 which is really blue if it were a color <laughs> slot, but uh, we snagged it out the web. But uh, that acts as the brains. It's, it's the core of the system. Now, there are other systems out there that are PLC-based, but by and large, these committed function devices are out there in mass, and they're used for that function. When we look at the combustion control side of, again, a steam boiler as an example, we'll see a number of units within that combustion control scheme. There's going to be some sort of pressure or temperature control. Of course, in a steam boiler, we're, we're there to maintain pressure. In the presence of a varying demand in the plant, we'll modulate our burner to hold some kind of set point there. Obviously, we've got to make water up uh, to replace the water that's liberated as steam. On balance pressure boilers, there's going to be some need for draft control or overfire pressure control. And then highlighted in red is where we're going to live today. We're talking about the fuel air ratio control. So we're going back to the basics of combustion and how fuel air ratio uh, control is impacted. You'll see a number of products that might look familiar toward the bottom of the screen on both sides. You'll see uh, transmitters, controllers, valves, and such. Products that are fairly typical of the combustion control aspect. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see your safety devices, uh, solenoids, airflow switches, safety shutoff valves, and such. So. We're going to live on the lower left-hand side today. We're trying to tackle just one topic. Let's okay. Move along. Thanks, John. So in the beginning, there was fire. There was fire. There was fire. All right. So here's the basic definition of combustion, folks. Uh, it is the rapid oxidation, meaning it involves oxygen, uh, of a fuel resulting in the release of usable heat and the production of visible flame. So for those of you who have to provide evidence to your supervisor that you were here today, I suspect you can just go around Remember spouting right this all day. Sure and people will be impressed and amazed. Uh, one of the things that you, that you notice there is uh, that's actually a shot from the inside of a boiler. And uh, I don't want to suggest that John's a little bit crazy when it comes to combustion, but somebody had to crawl in that boiler and take that picture, uh, and he's sitting right next to me. So at some point in time, if we have time later on today, he can explain to us how he did it and, and even further to that, why he did it. Okay, John. Okay. 